The next home cook aiming for an apron is Veronica, a lawyer from Toronto. Because I'm a lawyer, I am in front of judges all the time, and I'm used to working under pressure. I'm measuring lard to put into the shrimp dumplings. I am making a traditional Chinese dumpling called the hagao. It's made out of shrimp, and mine are going to look like goldfish. I'm very happy with the way my filling tastes. My dough feels perfect. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted. My goal in life is to become a Michelin inspector. A Michelin inspector is someone that basically identifies what the best restaurants in the world are. I'm getting three yeses for this dish. I know what good food is, and this is good food. It's going to be so awesome when the judges see my plate. I'm sure they all know what a hot gao is. I don't think they've ever seen one that looks like mine. Hello, hello. 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 What's your name? My name is Veronica. And what are you making, Veronica? Dim sum hakao, to be exact. It's a shrimp dumpling. Dim sum in Chinese means a touch of heart. And I like the idea that you put a lot of heart into every little bite. Why are you here? I have a 20-year plan, and I believe that winning MasterChef Canada will give me an express pass to the finish line. What's the finish line? The finish line is I want to be a Michelin inspector. The only person that would scare me more than a lawyer is a Michelin inspector. So if you become both, I will bow before you. <laughs> What was the inspiration for doing this particular dumpling dish? I saw this beautiful blue plate, which reminded me of a pond. And my grandfather actually had a koi pond when I was growing up. What do you know about Italian, French, other cuisines? Making pasta is not all that hard. You put it in the thing, you roll it out, and I think I can handle that. But pulling noodles, that's a real skill. Where do you get this confidence from? I am a lawyer. I'm used to being in front of judges. I know what good food tastes like. I know what good food is. And I think I have a Michelin quality dish right here. I'm done. This looks absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Well, you've made it look like a koi. Beautiful, and the wrapper just glistens there really nicely. You have bamboo shoots in here? No, I don't have bamboo shoots in there. So I actually put carrots in there as well as shiitake mushrooms. So you believe in adding a little twist? to make them your own. I do believe in doing that. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you very much. Thank Veronica. you. Veronica. Wow, that looks impressive. You know, you have all the details there. It looks like a beautiful pond. You pick the most difficult dim sum, hagao. I remember a quote from you a long time ago where you said the hot gal wrapper is the most delicious thing in dim sum. So I brought you a hot gal wrapper. Well, it's true I said that, but it has to be the best hot gal wrapper. I spent eight years learning how to make hot gal and perfecting it. After all that work, this is the moment. Why? I'm impressed. Thank you. I'm impressed. That means a lot. I can taste the shrimp filling. It's perfectly cooked. The texture, just right. The wrap is, to me, perfect. It's translucent. It has the bite. Chewy, not sticky. Thank you. I love the dish. I love confidence. Yes. But you have to be able to back that up. I'm 100% sure that this is a good dish, not because I'm conceited, but because I know good food. Good. It's not the best I've ever had, though. Really? No. Veronica, everything in that plate, I like. So, it's a yes from me. Thank you. Veronica, I'm going to keep things very short. I am fascinated by that confidence. I think the dish was a great dish, so it's going to be a yes from me. Thank you. So now I'm the last man standing between you and one of these aprons. You told us that you spent eight years perfecting that dish. Yes. In the MasterChef Canada kitchen, you don't even have hours sometimes, you have minutes. And I'm not convinced that you have the arsenal of ideas that can get you through at this point. I'm a lawyer, I'm always thinking on my feet. I'm always in front of judges, I can do this. Well, like any judge, I need proof. Unfortunately, this means no. But not all is lost. You have a second opportunity now to cook again. Understood. Well, Veronica, I'm really surprised Claudio said no. I have complete confidence in you. So go out there and 
prove Claudia wrong. Thank you. I'm not going home. I'm going to keep that in mind, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to do that. Hi there, Veronica. Hello, Chef. Now, tell me, what dish are you cooking for us? I'm going to do a seared arctic char with pickerel stock with clams and making some potatoes, carrots, and I'm going to throw some squash in there in the last minute. Sounds like you've got a lot going on. I always seem to. I go big or go home. Good luck. It's really good. Five, go, four, go, go, guys. three, on. two, one. Hands up! Oh, yeah. The judges have been observing and tasting throughout the challenge. They now take one final look before choosing the most promising dishes. The winner of this mystery box will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. I'm excited. I had just given up hope, and then they said my name. I made a pan-seared arctic char in a fish broth with a garnish of potatoes and wild rice. You certainly took more ingredients than anybody in this room. So let's cut into the fish. How do you like that fish? It should be medium. Well, spot on medium. Wow. Smooth, silky, crunchy, a bit of bite. It's a very, very nice combination. Thank you. I think this is a very stylish and sophisticated dish. And the fact that you use these little pommes gaufrettes as part of the garnish, wonderful. Thank you, Chef. Beautiful, moist. You let the key ingredient shine there. If I could comment one little element, maybe a little knob of ginger, would have given the broth a little pop. But overall, very well executed. Thank you, Chef. Okay, this isn't bad, not bad at all. Veronica, what do you get? I got the red mallet. My mom loves fish, I cook fish for her all the time. So I'm feeling right at home right now. I'm doing something I know very well. When my mom visits me from Hong Kong, she always requests that we eat at home one day and I make this dish for her. I am going to do a Thai-style fried fish. Uh, I'm gonna fry the bone as well. And I'm also doing like a Thai-style sauce for it to be dipped in. Well, this is a Chinese way. I've had many times at Chinese restaurant. You gotta be very careful and make sure this part is very crispy because the head takes a lot longer and this doesn't take very long to burn. I'm well aware of that. I will be holding it with my life. I hope so. Veronica, she's deep frying the whole head and spine. If she pulls that off, it could be a winner. I got one of the easiest fish here. I need to go above and beyond. Jeremy is doing a Southeast Asian style dish. He handled that monkfish surprisingly well. I cannot believe what Sean is doing with his sturgeon. He wants to roll it and make it look like a rose. One minute left. <sighs> I'm so happy with this. So freaking happy with this. Whoops! I'm a mess! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one! Hands up! Oh. I banged it out. I didn't think I could. I don't want to go home. It's exactly what I want. I just don't know if it's what the judges want. This dish is me on a plate because it's cooking techniques that I know and love. I made a Thai-style fried red mullet with a fish dipping sauce and a papaya and carrot slaw. And what was the biggest challenge in you pulling this dish off? The biggest challenge was probably the fact that I only have one fish. One chance to get it right. Correct. Red mullet is a delicate, sweet, gentle fish. I'm a little surprised that you put it up against such a, a big, almost fiery sauce. It's almost counterintuitive. Oh. But it works. Thank you, Chef. Sweet, acidic, but very complimentary. And what I see here is nothing short of a love affair with food. That's the Veronica that we want to see. Thank you, Chef. This is typical Asian, using every single part of the fish. You make good use of the bone, and I'm just gonna dig into that. This is exactly how I would have done it. I am so happy to see you finally bring out the Asian in your cooking. I'm happy to see you happy. <laughs> 
Well done. Thank you. And now for the best dish of the night. It was made by a home cook who experienced a bit of a turning point. Tonight, they wowed us with a dish that came straight from their heart. Congratulations, Veronica. This means so much to me. It's just nice to hear positive feedback about what I just consider a regular dinner at my house. I'm just trying to show them who I am. You'll both be captains on the next team challenge. Beautiful butter poached maritime lobster. Absolutely zero lobsters in Foothills County. They're not exactly running around the fields. The lobster must be perfectly parboiled, expertly shelled, and then poached in butter. If you want to break down a lobster, you need two thumbs. I don't know how I'm supposed to get through this pressure test. The trick, the great lobster, it's all about timing. You overcook it even by a mere second. The meat will taste and feel like rubber. That's a lot of pressure, especially since you're only going to have 20 minutes. Sometimes it takes me 20 minutes to get into a claw. Please head to your stations. At your stations, you have everything you need to prepare us the perfect butter poach lobster. This lobster needs to be more than perfect. The hardest part is going to be getting those darn claws out whole. Your 20 minutes start now! This is so hard. It's extremely stressful. I've butter poached lobster before, and I'm not gonna let anything stop me from staying in this competition. Julia did not put any vinegar in the water. The vinegar helps to release the meat from the shell. It really works well. I'm feeling quite confident. I'm a fighter, and a lobster is not going to send me home. You've got to cook the lobster, de-shell it. Then you have to make a beautiful, flavorful butter, and then gently poach it. The lobster tells you when it's ready. Lobster's got to be vibrant, glistening red. Presentation is critical in this challenge. You've got to have it beautifully deshelled. The claws have got to be whole, the knuckles have to be whole. Just know i got to wiggle these out so I can get the claw totally intact. Ugh. I don't know how to do this without my thumb. Ten minutes! You have ten minutes left! The clock is ticking like crazy. Look at Veronica. She is still trying to remove lobster from the shell. I can't get it open. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! Wow, Terry's already played it. This is not just about speed, it's about quality. And he's not taking advantage of extra time. If I were him, I'd be using my time to make sure it's perfect. There's like lobster chunks flying everywhere. People are struggling to get their lobster out of their shell. It's a complete madhouse down there. 30 seconds! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Looking around me, and I'm seeing the other lobster plates, mine look a little bit better than theirs do. It hurts a lot getting the tail out of the shell, but I managed to do it perfectly. I'm so happy. Hello, Veronica. It's a little sloppy, isn't it? It's not my usual quality. And was it just tarragon you put in your butter bath? No, I added some salt. So for this to be perfect, that almost clear flesh should be just lightly white, where the heat has just been able to penetrate through. I think that looks perfect to me. I happen to think you're right. Very nice cook on that lobster. Thank you, chef. A little bit of tarragon comes through, a nice fresh flavor. Perfect combination with lobster. Thank you. In every challenge, we ask you to cook with intelligence and drive, but we also ask that you cook with heart. And in this next mystery box challenge, we want to see that heart more than ever before. On the count of three, lift those boxes. One, two, three, lift! <laughs> oh. Yes. Finally. I love bacon. In front of you is all-purpose flour, sugar, farm fresh eggs, and basil margarine. All the basic ingredients you'll need to create a delicious baked dessert. You'll also see a heart-shaped baking tin, because baking is all about love. To help you tap into that love, we provided you with a little piece of inspiration. 
please turn over your heart-shaped baking tins. Oh. oh my goodness, this is my sister. She's back in Nigeria. I love my sister so much. I see the loves of my life. I am in this competition for my papa. And my two brothers, they're my life. Seeing grandma's face, I'm just elated. She's such a beautiful woman, and she's inspired me so much. <laughs> I don't know where the judges found this picture of my dad. He's my biggest supporter, and I'm gonna show him that I can do this. My dad loves green tea, and my mom loves chestnut cream. So I'm gonna mix the two together and make a matcha roll cake. It's decorated at the batter level, and I don't think the judges have ever seen anything like it. What I'm about to do is practically impossible in an hour. I'm not sure I can do it, but that's what my dad taught me to do. Shoot for the stars, try your hardest, and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm not gonna play it safe. The judges have accused me of not cooking from the heart on numerous occasions, and I'm gonna prove them wrong. 20 minutes left! Oh, that smells so good. If they're having anything that's hot, that should be cooling at this point. Because you do not want to put a cool liquid on top of a hot cake. I need to get this in the blast chiller immediately. I can't put the chestnut cream onto a hot cake. Go, thank you. Wait, I need to wait, I need to wait. Close it, close it. Oh my god. Oh, I've lost my cake. Oh god. Oh my god. This is a disaster. This is an absolute disaster. I feel defeated. There's nothing that I can do to fix this. That has got to be heartbreaking. Michelle is still flustered, but I know she can salvage what's left of her cake. I'll get you remotes. Here we go. Veronica has suggested to me to make a smaller cake. It won't be as elegant and as pretty, but uh, it's my only choice. That's okay, that's okay. I can't give up now. I want my kids to see how much of a fighter their mother is. We still do it. Ha <laughs> ha it's cold! <laughs> I got it! <laughs> One of the most difficult Japanese desserts that I executed it in an hour! Hey, Perla, you, you doing good? Oh, wow, that looks amazing. It's no Japanese roll cake. Okay. <laughs> we were blown away by what you did tonight. The first home cook we'd like to call up was inspired by a loving and supportive parent. And that home cook was Veronica. I'm super proud. I know my family would be super proud. I'm just hoping all the flavors are there. It's a Japanese matcha roll cake with the chestnut cream in the center. It is impressive. Thank you, chef. I don't even know how to do these patterns myself, I'll be honest. I don't know how you pulled that off. It's extraordinary. <laughs> Thank you, chef. There's a perfect balance between the chestnut cream and the green tea, and that white chocolate crunch. Outstanding. Thank you, chef. Extremely light, and the sponge is incredibly moist. Did you do anything to the sponge to make it so moist? No, I just have a good recipe, and the base cell helped out. Extraordinary presentation, technique. I can't find anything to fault on this. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. My dad would be ecstatic to see me now. He would be so proud. It was clear that you were all inspired by your loved ones tonight, and you've made it extremely hard for us to choose a winner. The home cook who created the most innovative and delicious dessert was... Veronica. I know how difficult executing this cake was. This is the best dish I've made since I came to MasterChef Canada. For winning tonight's Mystery Box Challenge, your Japanese matcha roll recipe will be featured in a basil margarine ad campaign. Yes. Good job, girl. Come on up here and stand next to me, please. Thank you. All right, Mary, who's your first pick? My first pick is an amazing, amazing home cook. I really like their, their flavors. So I'm gonna pick Veronica. I'm gonna be a great worker, B. I have speed, I have creativity, and I follow instructions very well. <laughs> How you doing? Great! So what are you making with the slam? We're doing a kind of a smoky onion jam with it. 
On the side, we're gonna do a salt potato chip with Irby Hellman's dip. Wow. Veronica, are you worried about time? Because you don't have much time right now. Uh, I'm not worried about time, actually. I used to volunteer at a soup kitchen, and I have really good time management, and I think I can do it. Great job. This is a tricky challenge because you only have three members on each team, which means each member needs to do a lot of heavy lifting. We need a lot more potatoes, guys. Oops. Why is Matthew spending so much time on the onions? Ah, oops. Why is Matthew still at the onions? We need more than that, though, man, you know? Yep, yep, I yep. know. Speed is not really his forte. Hey! Holy smoke! We're ready for service, and we have all these plates ready to go, and the line is going super fast. Uh, just take your money, just go ahead and grab one on the table. Thank you. This challenge is a numbers game. You have to sell the most sausages. Hey, thank you very you much. Guys. Thank Enjoy. you. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! Hello. Hello again, actually, eh? We're back. It was that good. Lamb sausages still available! The extremely loud lawyer is screaming at people to come and eat our lamb sausages. But the blue team isn't the only one with a loud lawyer. Spicy beef sausages, come grab them! Hot spicy beef sausages! Honestly, you think you can out yell me? Hot spicy beef sausages, come grab them! Anything left! There's still lamb sausages! I want to do the pig's feet, and then I want to do a zalot bao, which is a dumpling that has soup in it. If you want to do that, I don't mind doing the shoulder. Let's think about the menu. They now need to collaborate on a theme that will unite their dishes. Do we want to go more of an Asian route? I think we should go more of an Asian. Asian. But I'm not really strong with Asian. I don't feel really comfortable doing this, but to be a good team player, I have to cook Asian. Hi, Veronica. Hello, chef. What is your part in this team? I'm available for tasting and any sort of questions that people may have. I'm the most familiar with these ingredients out of everyone here. So you're acting like a mission inspector. I am a little bit. What are you doing? I'm making a play on xilongbao. Xilongbao is a Chinese soup dumpling that has to have at least 18 crimps. So it's meat, soup in a nice little bundle. 16, 17, 18. I will be counting. I will be counting. The red team, I like the theme they're doing, Asian. Veronica, she's doing xilongbao, which is a Chinese dim sum. Very difficult, requires a high level of skill. Making xilongbao, you need to serve it with black vinegar. I'm not gonna give the judges some black vinegar and a soy sauce plate. Let's make some caviar. Making caviar is just a matter of mixing black vinegar and agar and dropping it into frozen oil. Oh my god, look, Sean, look. It's working. It's working, it's Awesome. Magic. Awesome. Little caviars of vinegar, fantastic. Veronica, she's consulting for the menu and also the official taster. It's hot, but it's good. She is a Michelin inspector in training. This is delicious. It's good, right? Yeah. Mary's got her turkey roulade out. Wow, everyone is starting to plate right now. These types of proteins tend to look sloppy when they're plated. So I want to see creativity. I want to see finesse on the plate. I want to see garnishes that are going to highlight each protein. Jennifer and Veronica, toes. I think the deciding factor is going to be the pig's trotter and the chicken feet. Those are the two hardest ingredients to cook. Veronica, unlike Alvin, I'm no expert in Chinese cuisine, but what I know is that you have picked one of the most difficult dishes on the planet to execute in 90 minutes. The way that it looks is an absolute triumph. You made caviar. I did. Black vinegar caviar. That's difficult. You made your own wrapper? I did make my own wrapper. That's difficult. You folded it how many times? 21. That's difficult. We're not even in a finale yet. I treat every single competition as if it's the finale. You really captured so many things in one dish. Tradition, innovation, and flavor. The red team are very lucky to have you on their team. Thank you, Chef. So the first thing you have to do to reactivate some of these ingredients is to add some moisture to it. OK, chicken. Work your magic. Whether that is water, whether that is a little chicken stock, whether that's some white wine. On board the spaceship, there's this needle that sticks out of the wall. And you take your package, and you slide it over the needle, and then you turn for the amount of water you want to put into it. And then you push either a lukewarm button or a hot button. That's about the best you can do as a space chef. 
Oh my goodness, this is a bit never. I can't, I've never cooked with many of these ingredients before. I actually really enjoy this challenge. It's weird, but it's interesting. To me, it's got to be the real measure of both the skill as well as the imagination of the chef. The strawberries rehydrating? They're starting to actually look like strawberries. I'm very good at mystery boxes. I've won before. The secret is cook what you love. I'm making what I would want to eat if I came back from the space. I'm making congee, both with the dehydrated corn and the potato. Congee is a porridge that is savory that you normally put meats or vegetables into. This is what my mom always makes for me. Veronica. Hello, chef. How are Veronica, you? Veronica, it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Colonel. So what are you making? I'm making a corn and potato congee. And I'm going to do a Japanese omelet with the carrots and the broccoli and a fish floss the crumble. What's the biggest challenge right now that you're facing? Uh, the biggest challenge is time. The clock's not in my favor right now. On board the spaceship, we have a schedule that tells us what we're doing every five minutes for the entire six months we're up there. That's amazing because I don't know what I'm doing in the next five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you better figure it out because time is ticking time away. Is I'm ticking. working on it, chef. Five minutes, T minus five minutes, home cooks. Ah. Veronica looks like she's going to pull off that congee in 45 minutes. That's astonishing. Uh, Dr. Sean, he's got his pancake stack there. He's doing a little piping of whipped cream. Pretty, pretty happy. It's out of this world today. I'm amazed. The boring, repetitive way we just reheated those foodstuffs on orbit compared to what they have done. Full of tortilla, deep fried ravioli. It's really impressive. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one, hands up. up. Woo. Or as we say, lift up. Mission accomplished. Veronica. Sorry, guys. <laughs> This is a corn and potato-based chicken congee. I also made a Japanese omelet with the dehydrated broccoli and carrots, as well as a fish floss crumble. I really want to be sure and get everything on the spoon here. I don't want to miss one thing. That's a wonderful mixture of everything. It immediately gives you a sense of being back on Earth, a sense of home. Thank you, Colonel. It was an honor cooking for you today. Thank you. Kanji is the ultimate Chinese comfort food. This dish does it for me. The meat is perfectly cooked, very moist. I love the corn. After 166 days in space, I would love to come home to one of these. Thank you, Chef. So, Matthew, who are you going to pair up with Veronica? I know that Veronica uses her mind very well. Knowing that Veronica thinks about all of her dishes, I'm gonna put her with someone who cooks more from the heart. Veronica's gonna be with April Lee today. I think there's gonna be some clashing going on. There will be some yelling, <laughs> but I, I believe that she will listen. If there was ever time to be bossy, it'd be now. April Lee, are you ready to be yelled at? I can handle Veronica shouting. If she can handle me shouting at her. Cut it a little bit where the ends off. No, 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 like cut it more even this way. Veronica is already bossing April Lee around. Just put it in the pot pastry, go, go, go. April Lee, she cooks with a little bit more of her sort of heart and instinct. I don't think she's got the same kind of attention to detail that Veronica has. Oh, this puff pastry is soft. Turn it upside down onto cling wrap. <sighs> I'm not gonna let Veronica push me around. I can do this, Veronica. Okay. Do you know how many rounds that you're gonna need? Yeah, I need nine. This okay. is nine. Clean off that cutting board. Put that all in the bowl. That's why I put it there for us. April Lee likes to be clean and neat. Clear off a spot. Onto what? I cook in complete chaos. April Lee seems to be telling Veronica what to do now. Veronica, just keep focus. Focus and organize. Let's get that twill going, okay? So twill butter? Let's rock and roll with that twill. The hardest thing in this hors d'oeuvre platter to make is definitely the twill for the halibut ceviche. You have to make the batter, use the stencil, use the proper offset spatula so you get that right thickness to it. You need three, so do one hey. more on the last empty spot. Look, April Leaf, she's making the trails right now. You can see holes, they're way too thin. Go, go, okay. go, into this oven. Six minutes. She's not going to be able to fold that into combs. What do you think? Not a chance. OK. Pack the fish, pack okay. the fish. Veronica. Hi, Chef. Let's look at what you got done here. We have the cones in the oven. You're going to be folding those cones? Uh, we will be folding those cones. 
There may be a bit problem there. Yeah, we might have to redo that. What happened? You spread it too thin. Yeah, we need to redo this. This is the worst possible thing that can happen. Switch! And switch. I need to remake the twill dough. I don't want oh. to make my partner panic, but we are in the weeds and we might not get out of it. And you have 30 minutes left! Oh my god. I think April Lee's just about to take out wow. the second batch of twill. This is the moment of truth for Veronica and April Lee. If you look at the edges, they've just crisp, which means that uh, it, it's perfectly cooked, actually. Could work. We finished the twill dough. I just want to clear this off, Veronica, and make sure that these cornets are safe. If you're going to do that, you have to hurry. The cleaning is really annoying. The intensity is definitely heating up. Oh, shoot. What do we need to do? Terry, get to pickling, man. Get to pickling. This is not a priority, Terry. Let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go. OK. I'll be right back. Huh? Where are you going? I'm from Alberta. I'm the meat girl. She's getting a cast iron pan. That's a brilliant idea. I know how to cook beef. You're killing it. Looks like April and Veronica are getting along very well right now. You're my new best friend. Switch! Here, take this. Switch! Go, go, go. Shit. Take that, take that. <laughs> okay. This last home cook needs to finish all of the plating. One minute! Yeah, next. Beats? Beats? Come on, Veronica. Steaks couldn't get much higher because this is ending and one of them going home. Everything looking good, Sean? Just cleaning up. Ten, nine, go, Mary. eight, And check those seven, dots at the very end, six, too. Think about if you five, even have 10 seconds. Four, Keep going, three, Sean. Two, on, guys. one, hands up! <laughs> April Lee and Veronica, please bring up your platter. How's the tag team feeling about it? I did way better with April Lee on my team than had I tried to approach this alone. That sounds like a great compliment. <laughs> That's an amazing compliment. I couldn't have done it without my partner, Veronica, tonight. I think you've got everything on here, but the beat. We had the red beat on the top and the golden beat on the bottom. Oh. That won't affect the flavor. It's just the presentation. Exact replication. Understood, Chef. Beautiful combination of flavors. Upside down, though. And the cornets here. The ceviche ice actually tastes very good, but the twill is a little on the thick side because it's rolled over too many times. If you'd open that up a little bit more, you could have filled that just with a touch more of the ceviche. Because now I've taken one bite, I have nothing in the bottom here. Understood. So this is a tricky one. The pork has to be succulent in the middle. Nervous? I'm nervous every time you taste my food. Please be soft. Hmm. It's pretty awesome. Yes. Good. <laughs> that is incredibly moist, and it's tricky to do. I covered the pork in Hellman's Real Mayo. Using mayonnaise is a nice little trick to seal in that moisture. <laughs> Great teamwork. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that leaves only one hors d'oeuvres for me. The size of the beef is a wee bit too small. Okay. But the puree, that was very, very nice. The pickle, nice touch, good details. Overall, you gals did a <laughs> great job. Thank you, Chef. Good job. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm really proud that we did this together. It's a tough challenge. It was. I am making a New York strip loin, acorn squash puree, as well as a play on a teriyaki sauce. My advantage is I know what world-class food is. So I spent a lot of time in Japan a couple months ago. I went on a food trip, and I want to bring out those same flavors that I experienced there. Run. Nice. Not bad for a first-timer. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! You know, every chef has a unique style of plating. Looks like Jeremy's dreamed us like a replication challenge. He's doing exactly what you did. Well, I tell you, I don't want to see a direct copy. Thirty seconds. You have thirty seconds left. I'm waiting for the very last second to slice that duck breast. If I don't let my duck rest long enough, it's gonna bleed out all over my beautiful puree. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, hands up! Oh my god! Oh 
my God. The judges take one final look before selecting the most promising dishes for tasting. I'm hoping it's a world-class entree. Fingers crossed. I'm so thrilled. I have never made a puree before, so I hope they like it. I have a New York strip loin, and underneath is acorn squash and sweet potato puree. Nicely seasoned steak. It's nicely cooked. The puree is absolutely wonderful when it is that creamy and light and beautifully seasoned. The puree has a wonderful gold background to it, but uh, I do feel it's sort of one step away from being fully complete. Microgreens, that might have done it, just to give it one additional pop of color. Overall, you had a great idea, and you pulled most of it off. Thank you, Chef. Here on the beef, I think it's perfectly done. It's well seasoned, keep it simple. The puree, absolutely perfect, nice and silky. All the flavors, they all come together. It's almost world class. Thank you, chef. <laughs> Veronica, all the way from Hong Kong, your father, Alan, your mother, Lily, and from Vancouver, your sister, Alethea. My mom has been an inspiration for me in the kitchen. I've had many challenges where I hear my mom's voice, but my dad's just a real inspiration to me in life. He's taught me about how to just be a person. Alan, I heard that you had your ticket booked from Hong Kong because you were so sure that Veronica was gonna be in the finale. That's right, yeah, I have confidence in her. Lily, where did she get that drive from? From Daddy. <laughs> Are you ready to show us and your family what you can do? Yes, yes chef. chef! Your 60 minutes starts now! Let's go, Matthew! Let's go, Matthew! I really want to show my family everything that I've learned and how far I've come in terms of a cook and as well as as a person. I'm making Taiwanese-style brisket with hand-pulled noodles and vegetables. I'm going the extra mile today because my family's here. Ron, you can do it! From St. Lawrence Market, they would have gotten tons of inspiration. This is an opportunity for them to show off in front of their families. Good thing we have pressure cookers in this kitchen, because without a pressure cooker, you would never be able to achieve the oxtail or the brisket in 60 minutes. 25 minutes! You have 25 minutes left! <laughs> My dad is very worried about the brisket. He thinks brisket is a bad idea. It takes a very long time to cook. So I really want to check on it. Veronica pulled her brisket out, and it's still raw in the middle. It's completely raw. I am so scared. It's pink, so that means it's not cooked through. It's got to go back into the pressure cooker. Has to, has to. Put it back in and let it go and hope it works. I'm pulling noodles in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Pulling noodles is a lost art. There's a lot of manpower, a lot of technique, a lot of skill. My dad has not seen me do this yet, so I'm excited to show him. Pulling noodle is a real craft. Chef spends years learning how to do it. They take apprenticeships, actually, learning from the masters in Hong Kong. Top three's on the line. I would never take this kind of risk normally in such an important cook, but today I'm doing it. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. Five minutes. Oh, Veronica is opening up her pressure cooker, so I hope her beef is cooked. My brisket is cooked, but it is tough. One minute, you have one minute left. Feeling really good right now. It's just all a matter of uh, getting it on the plate. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Veronica, please bring up your dish. I know my brisket's tough. My dad's here. He wouldn't want me to lie to the judges. So I'm just going to be honest and tell them straight up. This is a braised brisket with hand-pulled noodles, pickled cucumber, and a selection of vegetables. How are you feeling? Very happy with my noodles, but I don't know if the meat's cooked through. Brisket, it is a, an inexpensive cut that is so delicious when cooked in a very moist method.
Beef brisket is a little on the underdone side. Possibly another 10 or 15 minutes, and it would have hit the sweet spot. But the flavors, rich, homey, big, bold flavor to it, absolutely wonderful. Now the noodle, hand pulled. Delicious, good density, a nice toothiness to it, an elevated family meal. Thank you, chef. Well done. Thank you. I know my family's happy. I feel good. <laughs>